Hi, everybody. This is Michael James with The Noggin Podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us, David George Brook, that gratitude guy. David and I met out of Seattle maybe eight and a half, nine years ago now. Is that kind of close, David? Say pretty close. Yep. Awesome. And so I'd like to introduce David to The Noggin Podcast. The Noggin Podcast is about bringing your ideas into the world and how you execute on them. So in the first few episodes, I talked about a variety of different ideas, what I'm up to in life, the new business ventures that we're involved in, as well as future guests that we're going to be bringing in. Today, we actually have a guest, David George Brook, and I'd like to introduce him and let him kind of tell the story of how initially him and I got introduced and kind of how that organic story led into and I'll, I'll kind of let him tell that initial story. So David, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business and how you and I initially met. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for having me on your podcast. I would say, as you mentioned, it was probably about eight or 10 years ago. And I remember I was doing a talk at a the Linwood Convention Center, I believe it was. And they had as many times when you do talks, they have breakout sessions and different things. And so people are doing different subjects. You can go around to the different rooms, breakout rooms, and you can see the title of what the topic is. And and I'm pretty certain, if memory serves correct, that yours was on constant contact and email marketing, if I'm not mistaken. And so I stepped in there and listened to it. And I thought, what's this young guy doing? He really seems to know what he's talking about. And just a dynamic speaker and covering that and, and going through all the, the different uh, aspects of email marketing and so forth. And my subject, which I'll get to in a second, is gratitude. But so we, I met him afterwards and we kind of talked. And you know, one of the things I've really noticed that I've enjoyed, I've been doing this for about 10 years now is when you get into uh, an area or a community of people that want to make a difference, you hear that a lot, impact lives and provide a service and really help people, is you get something that I have not come up with a better word for it. It's just there's a like-mindedness about it. And I met you, and, and even though you're half my age, it didn't really matter. We just had an instant connection. In fact, I keep joking that I'm going to get the adoption papers and adopt you officially to be my son. So I have three sons instead of two. But we just hit it off immediately and then started kind of getting together for coffee. And then I live in Seattle and you've been living in Bell, uh, Bellingham. And so we were relatively close by. But I think what really probably propelled us forward the most was just that, again, that like-mindedness, that single-mindedness about wanting to do things and really under the auspices of helping people. And my brand has been for the last 10 years since, since I got into speaking and kind of left the retail world has been that gratitude guy. And it's all about helping people to focus on what they have versus what they don't have. And one of my mantras is, is gratitude turns what you have into enough. And it's so important to have an attitude of gratitude or a mindset that has gratitude as part of your the glass half full type of philosophy. And so I started speaking or I was speaking at that time too, I've continued speaking and I do coaching and I've done books and gratitude journals and online courses and very and group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do a lot of coaching, both uh, again in the group setting as well as one-on-one. -on -one. And it's all under the auspices um, and the headline of being grateful for what you have and how it's your life. It can be your relationships. It can be money. It can be your career. It can be family, friends, whatever. And the whole sort of speaking, coaching, books all kind of go together. And then along the way too, Michael, you and I have collaborated on things with a lot of, for lack of a better term, the back end things. I know the front end of computers and things uh, relatively well. But you're a whiz at the back end and all the things, whether it's the email marketing you talked about at that one point, websites, communication, social media, of course, is huge and all those things. And I've gotten to know some of those things pretty well, but I've really turned to you for a lot of the really more in-depth uh, variety of that or in-depth knowledge to really make those platforms work for you. And in this world today, where all that electronic aspect of, of things is so important. So again, I just think the one word I think words that come to mind more than anything else is just this incredible like-mindedness. And you've always, you know, one of the things I've said too, for many times, and I have a podcast of my own, and it's when you meet people, you instantly 
either like them or it's not that you don't like them. It's just that you just have that same connection. And you and I had that connection from the beginning. And so much of it is wanting to make a difference. And regardless of our situation, what what our family was like, what our education was like, what growing up was like, just knowing we're on this planet. And I guess my age too, it's a very short amount of time. I've been on the planet over seven decades. It seems like about 10 or 20 years it goes by so fast. We, we both wanted to accomplish a lot. And so just doing that in tandem and being together and just having that energy and that it's like the, the best compliment I can give you for you and me is, is like this tremendous tennis match. It just goes back and forth in the ball, these long rallies or volleys or whatever they call them and uh, never a dull moment. You know, and I can think of, driving up to Bellingham. I haven't been there for a while because of COVID and so forth, but going to Starbucks and things and you and I getting together and going over all the initiatives we were working on, two or three hour meeting, it's time to go and it feels like I've been there a half hour. So it's just been a tremendous relationship and I just, I very, I very much appreciate you and what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's why I wanted to bring you onto this podcast and like give you an extra level of exposure and see, you know, new audiences, new eyes, since those nine, nine and a half years we've known each other. The thing that impresses me, David, is you are twice my age. You do have this phenomenal work ethic. You have these ideas and you're making them a reality. You're making yeah, it a business, you. an ongoing service, and you're changing lives in that process. Yeah. Which again, huge gratitude to you, sir, Thank you. for doing so. Thank and you. You know, for you to be able to work with anyone's age, understand your sons. How old is your youngest son? 27 and my older son is 37. Yeah. So, you know, David, you know, he's he's come up with a very unique life. You've had lots of girlfriends, you've been married and, you know, you've had all these life stories that have, you know, calculated to your presentation and how you're able to reach and reciprocate with other people. Right. And when I've seen you speak in person, you touch people extremely oh, deeply, you, intimately and their emotions, you know, it's, you're able to connect with a very wide audience yeah. and thank you. the message you have, you know, can be, you know, listened to or taken in by just about anyone. And right. now you've made the audios, the podcasts and the books. And, you know, it's been fun to really watch how that content and those channels have been created and grown over time. Yeah. I'd say you're a, you're a pretty big authority in those, in those spaces. So it's been really cool to watch. So. Well, thank you. And I think you mentioned, uh, been married a few times and girlfriends and just different things. It's, it, I really realized really early on in the speaking business that one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful mode, uh, or, or aspect of speaking is the stories you tell. So mm -hmm. when you've been on the planet for a long time, there's tremendous stories that you have that you own, that you've lived yourself and they illustrate points that you're making during the talk. And I think what's neat about it is that the audience member is looking at you thinking, what does this person do? And I've said, sometimes I'm not teaching out of some book. And I point to my shoes, these shoes have walked down these paths and they've seen it. And so one of the most common themes that I seem to find over and over again is people bouncing back from traumas and tragedies and setbacks in their life and people. And we live unfortunately in a world where uh, so much of this, this drug culture we have, where really all drinking drugs, alcohol, all that stuff is just somebody's coping mechanism is this just how they're trying to get through. And unfortunately, I lost my uh, wife, the mother of my children to an overdose on prescription medication. And she died on September 29th, 1998. And th there again, it was getting hooked on something that was a way to just try to cope with the stresses of life. So I get to provide this gratitude mindset is a very, very healthy coping mechanism in a world of so many destructive and deadly ones that are killing people on a regular basis. And, and it's neat because where, where you and I fit in so well together and you, I've seen you speak as well is anything where you get to reach a bigger audience. And so again, whether it was way back to constant contact and email marketing or social media or all these new platforms, I don't think back then they had Instagram and TikTok. There might've been Facebook book and YouTube and things like this. We were talking about it, but it hadn't shown up yet. It so hadn't shown up. Like, that, get that's, ready, buddy. <laughs> that's right. It's right. It's going to happen. And, and all those things do is help you reach a bigger audience. And I think when I, I feel very blessed to know on a regular basis, whether it's an email, I have a notebook 
a few feet from me that I call it my heartwarming emails and notes notebook. And it's stuffed mm -hmm. with notes. You changed my life. You saved my life. You do all these different things. And it just makes me feel so validated that what I'm doing has a purpose. And so mm -hmm. when you really understand that and that you have a message uh, that you want to get to more people, the more you get to people, the more you have people you're saving and more people you're helping. So that's why the, again, I come back to you for always as my social media expert, among many other things too, websites, anything to do with so much of the electronic world we're in today is all about reaching more people. Because if you really are fond of something, you really feel good about it. It's just natural to want to reach more people. And you've been a great influence on me in that regard. Thank you. It's, you know, it's, it's finding those people that I, you know, energetically connect with over the years and it's finding ways to extend their messaging, their mm -hmm. branding, their services and their classes and courses out to as many people as possible that resonate within, you know, those constructs and, you know, working with you and other people in those spaces, you really get to learn all you know, there's 300 plus million people here in the States and there's 7 billion plus people in the, in the world. And so to really try and understand the size of that, it's endless. Right. You right. can work with a lot of people. So can all of these other folks doing similar types of services or products. Well, and it was interesting. And you, you said, oh, sorry, you said something earlier about, uh, I think maybe before we were on the air about follow through and the work and so forth. And I've always liked the line about it's simple, but it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. simple to just, you just have to do this. But you and I talked about a, an individual that you introduced me to, a young lady that I just met and you suggested, David, I think you should talk to her. And you met her through your efforts. And then I talked to her, clicked with her immediately. And so you've got to follow through and you've got to reach out and you've got to make those efforts and really be consistent in your message and, and with your uh, follow through, as I say, and, and get back and do things. But gosh, it's so neat because it's again, it reminds me when it's interesting you started out the podcast with how you and I met because it was just an instant connection we had. And with this young lady, we just mentioned same thing. And it's so important. In fact, it, you speak in the stories and I was taught by many a speaker about, I have a story for every single you know situation you can come up with that illustrates mm -hmm. a point. And I remember a good buddy of mine a number of years complaining about his friend because his friend would sit there in his condo with the television clicker and he clicked changing channels go, how come I can never meet any women as he's changing channels? And the friend <laughs> says, you may have to get out of the condo. You may have to actually go places and go meet people. I don't know if it's a bar or somewhere, but, but see, but that's what you've done. You've expanded your horizons. You don't just sit there with your clicker changing channels. You're out there making things happen and always like the solid number and just different things. You're always to cover, uncovering new things, new modes, new platforms. And that's what it's all about. So it's great to have a message and it's great to take it out there, but it, it takes effort and it takes energy. And it's not just going to happen by changing those channels of that clicker. Well, as you uh, remember me telling you about the social media platforms initially, it's going to be consistent, going to have yes. to be creative, and it's going to take some time of yours. Yeah. But here's the potential. And you saw yeah. that. And yeah. you've been consistent. And now look at what you're doing. You're all over yeah. the country. Yeah. So, David, now that you've been doing this 10 years, what's your next month look like for you? What are you up to? Where are you going? Well, uh, thanks for asking. A lot of it is more of the same, which is, uh, again, the social media. For instance, I do a, a daily gratitude walk that every day mm -hmm. that goes out and it's got a message and it's just I a one that. minute message. And it goes out to Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and so forth. And really, really important to have that consistent message. In this case, it's gratitude, but anybody who's got their platform or their, their message that they want to get out there. But for me, the most exciting thing that's coming up is because of the last 18 months and COVID-19 and everything is I'm now traveling again. And I'm still a little concerned, like a lot of people are. I just had not to mention one, two, three, three things that all got postponed because of the variant and some things that have come back. So that's kind of concerned me a bit. But what I'm really excited to this next month is I'm going to be traveling Nebraska, Kansas City, um, Pensacola, Las Vegas, and all in the next 60 to 75 days. And I'm really excited to get back out in front of people because Zoom mm -hmm. is we're recording this and I do on my podcast recorded on Zoom and then put it out to YouTube, but then also put it on the, the radio network as well. Uh, there's just, it, it's, you, you learned how to really give me a high five. How you doing, Michael? Good to see you. I like your chair. And, and you'll really make people feel they were far, part of part of something. And I think what's interesting is I'm 
with all that being said, and Zoom really helped a lot of us to say the least, mm -hmm. I'm so looking forward to getting back out in front of people and hearing the laughter. And and, and I would say when on Zoom, you, you generally mute most everybody. And so in the first, I think I've done like 100, 110 Zoom calls, uh, Zoom presentations since the pandemic about March mm -hmm. 15th of uh, 2020. And but in the beginning, I had to get so used to it because when you have a live crowd, you'll say things and they'll laugh and they'll clap and all those things. And I'd say something that was funny, and you see, that but you couldn't hear so anything because everyone yeah. was muted. So I, I guess I'll go on to the next subject now. I guess <laughs> I'm not going to wait for the applause to die down because you that crowd out <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it took a different kind of a mode, but but boy, I am going to be forever grateful. Speaking of my favorite word, to Zoom because it really saved me. And I went to some places. I have a USA map, and I have little blue arrows, all the places that I have or red arrows, all the places I've traveled. But now cool. I have a huge number of blue arrows, which is all the places I went via Zoom. And, oh, nice. and made it so easy three four five hours ahead of time didn't matter here we are and there's the zoom and they're right there and here we are in florida here we are in new jersey here we are in vermont you know it was really neat so you open up a lot of things too but but it really is and i think you're the same as it's just really about getting that message out to more and more people and when you feel strongly about it, you just want to reach as many people as you can. So back to your mm -hmm. original question, I'm just really excited because the traveling and, you know, I'll be wearing my mask. I'll be at the airport tomorrow and everything. But I, I got books stacked up and there's a lot of little things I do, experiential mm -hmm. type exercises where turn to your neighbor, take this three by five card stand up, put your arm, do your arm in a circle to prove points, and then turn to this person, then read this off, and then write down these three things. So it's very you know, exercise oriented, very experiential, but there's nothing like being in front of that crowd. So I'm really yeah. looking forward to having that. You know, it's just like when you and I met, remember when you, oh, yeah, totally. when I came up to your seminar, it, you got a full house. I mean, it was, it was packed and it's just, it's really cool that way. A lot of energy. It's very dynamic and like watching you in the the rooms and audiences, I've seen you in some really big audiences mm -hmm. and it's amazing how the entire room is like playing out of the palm of your hand. And yeah, yeah, you again, it's, it's the emotion and that energy of like 500 people or 500 soldiers or more. And exactly. you know, it's, you got them like listening of every single word and syllable that comes out of your mouth. So it's really well, and, impactful, and I think on, on a lot of lives you know yeah and thank you know, for they, they might they might take it home too and share it with well their and friends, that's what you really want is their to, wives and others is what do they get tomorrow because i mean yeah. to me i've seen some tremendous speakers but ask me the next day what they said yesterday and i can't remember so what yeah. would you want to have something that they can take home but it, it is interesting because i'll tell people right up front and i'll say this is there going to be a lot of exercises there's going to be some standing up turning to your partners so be ready and, and they also mm -hmm. well, do we have your powerpoint slides no powerpoint slides this is just me and the audience so we're going to do this and i've got it all ready to go and it's funny because every once in a while people go man you talk fast and i go well i said i got a lot of energy and i got a lot of things i want to get across and i only got 60 minutes and so forth and i said plus can you imagine if i went hello i'm that gratitude guy i want to <laughs> tell you some things today i just don't think it would fly <laughs> <laughs> people i get excited about it and i just if one person we've all heard this statement but it's so true i know it's true as you for you as well regardless of the size if one person tells you 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 impacted their life you changed their life it just it makes everything worth it and if it's more than that it's just like a huge bonus because again that's mm -hmm. what you and i are really after is impacting as many lives as we can so absolutely really really important point now with the impacting of lives david how could our audience how could our listeners how could future people understand more about the gratitude guy what courses you offer sure. kind of some details of like say I was to be a customer of yours or, sure. you know, I was to refer you. How, what would that look like for some people? Well, let me thank you again. Working with you. You bet. Thank you again for uh, uh, asking that. And a lot of it revolves around my website and that's thatgratitudeguy.com. And so there's a lot of information on there too. And one of the things you can find is that I'm a big, big proponent of a gratitude journal. And it takes five minutes every day to write your your things that you're grateful for. The one that I have, it may not be able to come up as much on the um because I've got another background here, but it's oh, that yeah. gratitude guy's daily gratitude journal. It's available on mm -hmm. Amazon and yep. it takes five minutes a day. But the thing that's neat about it is it's got a template. 
so you can follow it and it has what's known as your daily number. It has your special accounts, uh, special events and um, uh, current events that are happening in that day, special occasions, I should say. There's some lines for what you're grateful for today. There's the two lines for the highlight of your day. There's a little inspirational gratitude type quote. And then on the right hand side is your gratitude for tomorrow. So the gratitude journal is certainly one way. But as, as you've alluded to, Michael, a lot of this is we need kind of an injection. It really helps. We don't need it, but it helps to have an injection of something every day. It's the same reason why you would brush your teeth every day, take a shower, do some of these basic things that we do because it's just a new day. And so gratitude is no different. So mm -hmm. for me, I have the daily gratitude walk, which goes out to all these platforms. And almost all mm -hmm. those platforms are available at David George Brook or that gratitude guy, one or either of those, you'll find it in Instagram and TikTok and all those, but it's usually under that gratitude guy. On awesome. YouTube, you get all sorts of videos. I have I think 15 or 1600 subscribers and I have over 1500 videos on YouTube yeah. now. And I think Michael, you and I talked way back when, when I, I'm sure I told you, wouldn't it be cool? I started to do a video here and there. And I remember having coffee with you and going someday I'm going to have 50 videos someday. That's going to be quite the day. And now it's 1500. <laughs> so, but that's now you're laughing that's, all the way to the bank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's an injection. And the reason why that's so important. And I learned this so much of this from you is because whether it's male or female or young or old or, or rich or poor, or whatever it might be, people have different ways of getting the content. So there's going to be people that want a Facebook post. There's going to be people that want to see something on TikTok, which is much younger and faster as, as Instagram is. Uh, the YouTube thing is great. The gratitude journal that you do there is great. And then another thing is that for people that are curious, because when I wrap up my talks, I always talk about how do you get more gratitude in your life? And coaching is, I mentioned another thing I do, and that's again at thatgratitudeguy.com. And I have some assessments that you can take, but the most important thing is to email me and I will send you an assessment. And we'll see if we might be a fit. And that's at david at thatgratitudeguy.com. And, but there's also something a lot of people like, and you mentioned consistency, Michael, which I 100% agree with. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, an inch every day and, you know, or, or what's the example I always use? Michael James and David Brooke could walk a mile every single day together. And at the end of the year, we would have walked 365 miles, but we mm -hmm. can't wait till December 1st and say, let's walk to Portland and back and call yeah. it good for the year. You know, <laughs> so you want those bite-sized pieces. And, yeah. and a good example is every Monday, I do these videos every day, the daily gratitude walk, but also mm -hmm. I do the Monday morning minute, and that's a one minute video that comes out every Monday morning at 6 a.m. to my mailing list. And if you would like to get that, you simply go to your text and you text the number 22828. That's five digits, 22828 is the number. And in the message box, you type in gratitude guy and it'll ask you for your email and that'll automatically sign you up to the Monday morning minute. And that's, awesome. that's really a lot of people like that. And that's again, that monthly or that weekly every Monday morning to get you going. And then the daily ones you can get going to YouTube and subscribing and that's under David George Brooke. So it's usually either David George mm -hmm. Brooke or that gratitude guy. And there's other things on the website too. You have access to my podcast. My podcast is available on the Transformation Talk Radio Network, and it goes out every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m., and that is called uh, That Gratitude Guy Podcast. You can also get it at thatgratitudeguypodcast.com. So the whole idea of being, and then as I mentioned, the gratitude journals, you can get at Amazon, you can get them on the website. If you go to the website, you get one and you get the second one half off, which is Perfect. nice because there's a banner on the front. So really, it's just trying to give as many different avenues as possible uh, for somebody to get connected with me, but more importantly, gratitude and knowing mm -hmm. how much it can change your mindset. And just um, one of the things that we do when I mentioned the experiences and the exercises is I do a thing where I kind of say the daily number and I have people put pick down put down their daily number, which is kind of taking their temperature. And then they write four or five things they're grateful for. And then I have them put down another daily number and half the time, half the hands go up, the number's gone up. 
And just from a 60 second example of focusing on a half a dozen things you're grateful for and your mindset can go up. And I tell them, if that can happen in 60 seconds, imagine what can happen in five minutes every day with a gratitude journal. So it, it's really, oh I, I think the biggest thing, Michael, that I try to get across is I just want, I implore people, give this a try. Here's the tools that I have. This is how it works. Take these tools, try them. And it's, it's one of the healthiest coping mechanisms available because again, at, at my stage on this planet, I've seen a lot of people that don't make it through tough times. And whether they're your age or my age, it doesn't matter. Everybody goes through these ups and downs. Like life is just this one big kind of roller coaster. Yep. The up high stuff is really cool. But what's going to define you or save you in many cases is when you're at the bottom and how do you get out of there again? And I know right. your story extremely well, and you've had some significant ups and downs, even somebody in your 30s. And so how do you get through those? Well, having a gratitude mindset and being grateful and really focus on your blessings and your abundance is a great way to do it. It can really sustain you through some of the toughest times. You bet. Now, you and I, over those 10 years, we have talked about a lot of different things, parents, yeah grandparents, mm -hmm. kids, relationships, what have you. Yep. Over the last two years since this pandemic, mm -hmm. David, what have you noticed as far as like people around you, Facebook feeds, emails, just people in conversation? Do you notice that people are becoming more positive now coming out of this pandemic? Do you feel like people are in general like heavy and depressed or do you feel like there's some positivity and this pandemic actually gave us some time to look inwards on ourselves and to reflect on what's good what's bad and maybe yes. where we want to go in our lives what I, do you I think, think on that i think good question i think the reflection is always important i certainly feel we're coming out of it even though i mentioned a couple of my upcoming talks that uh, got mm -hmm. put sidelined again postponed uh, until the variant some of these things wear down but i think the worst of it was probably about halfway maybe two-thirds of the way through the sort of the march 15th 2020 to this summer where mm -hmm. after a year and a half what it did for a lot of people yes there was some reflection there was some there was definitely some time to, to think inwardly and you're in your house and so forth but i think one of the biggest things that I saw come out of it kind of a silver lining is how incredibly important community is for people. Ooh, yeah. And it, one of the big things I do a module called find yourself, find your talent, find your passion, find your purpose. And I maintain that hmm. the most important relationship you'll ever have in your life is one you have with yourself. Number yep. two, try to find what your talent is personally or professionally, and then figure out what you're really passionate about. You marry those three things, you're probably going to get your purpose. But mm -hmm. I think community is something that's so important and people were starving for community and yes zoom was a huge help i can't imagine where we would have been without zoom but can you imagine if there was no facebook no exactly zoom, no oh my gosh and and just having people that, are just watching tv all day that yep, would be interesting exactly. They're making phone calls right so. and i know just having you and i have facetime sometimes on the phone and just having that oh, person's yeah. face right there it feels like we're at that same starbucks and you know yeah. the, the phone's about six inches from my hand or what have you i feel like i'm closer to you than at starbucks Bucks right now i know isn't that interesting like, isn't that weird like it is it really is true and so it really helped but then you notice that over time uh, people got zoomed out and i've had too many zooms and i'm getting you know this and that <laughs> and so yeah and so i think that it's it's really it really made people get kind of introspective and think about maybe one of the most important significant things that came out of the 18 months is that importance for connection and really understand how important community really was. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there was, a, I, I heard something, we just passed the 20 year uh, anniversary of 9-11. Yeah, such a difficult big. time for all of us to either go through or witness it or what have you. But there was an interesting fact that somebody mentioned in one of the broadcasts, they said that all the people or a majority of the people that were either engaged or about to get married or living together or whatever they were, immediately after 9-11, they either got married or they broke up. And it was kind of like, there's no, we don't know about the future. We better move on this thing right now. So there was no more just hanging around. And I thought, yeah. man, that was interesting. I never thought about that because a lot of us, you know, oh. is the world coming to an end? I mean, it was really a really very challenging time to say the least, but yeah. it forced people to kind of make a decision. So I think this, this pandemic 
kind of did a very similar thing where it really made us understand how important our connections are and our family and our friends and, and Zoom helped it, but there's just nothing like, I actually shook hands with somebody the other day and it felt good after many, many months. Oh my God, I'm shaking hands again or give kind of a bro mm -hmm. hug, you know, to a friend or totally. what have you. And I thought, wow, that felt good. So maybe having a much higher appreciation level for those things that kind of got lost in the shuffle as a result yep. of the pandemic. So yeah. made us think yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Well, it's, you know, for me, it's, it's been really interesting because of on the social sphere of like, we're, we're logged into so many different Facebook and Instagram and all these different profiles. Mm -hmm. And so you see like all these different feeds and comments and, you know, the, uh, around, uh, the presidential election and, you, you know, certain weather events, certain news events, certain memes that go out yeah. on social media. It's, yep. it's amazing how all this stuff, you know, positive, negative kind of, uh, you know, translates to other things potentially. And it, a lot of people are following those threads and it's, you know, it, it can deter people. It can make people positive and have a different outlook on life. Yeah. And, you know, That's I'll, I'll just, point. yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like people in my space at least have been more positive. They've been trying to be creative spend mm -hmm. their time wisely, have as much fun as possible, work when they absolutely need to. And the rest of the time they're doing their themselves. They're trying to figure out themselves. Right. They're trying to live out their life the way they want. And I think, yeah. I think that's kind of cool. So it's been, uh, you know, for me, it, there was a real, there was a heaviness to it, but I think it's transformed and trans, you know, transmuted to much more positive space. So. Well, I agree. And I think something that's a very important concept for everything in life is, is the silver linings there's there's always a silver lining and mm -hmm. there's some things like i recently did a video um and it was a blog post too and that is is it possible to be great to be grateful when you're grieving uh, so even when you've lost somebody and it's grieving and it can be i lost my wife and i lost my mom and dad when i was relatively young and and mm -hmm. but yes it is possible there's still things to be thankful for it doesn't mean that you're not going to take this time to grieve the loss of this person or the situation but mm -hmm. there's always going to be a, you know and i'm looking out there's not a cloud in the sky it's still a beautiful day and you know it rains a lot in seattle so when it's a beautiful day that's something to be very grateful for so it, it's just it's Those always walks about, are a lot more enjoyable aren't they? <laughs> yes yes exactly exactly and that's why i just think it's it's really important to know that there's there's always an upside to these things and and maybe mm -hmm. one of the most important things of all I didn't really mention, but I'll mention it here is it is, I argue with people about this occasionally, it is a choice. You get to decide every day, Michael James, David Brooke, whoever it is, left side of the bed, right side of the bed, positive, negative, grateful, ungrateful, good, bad, and nobody makes you that way. So it's a choice that you get to have, it's free will. And so you can snap your fingers and stop being the negative Nelly, and you can be somebody who's positive and see how grateful you are for all these blessings and abundance you have just like that and you'll notice what a difference it makes to your mindset it's so powerful yep give yourself 60 seconds and see what comes out exactly that 60 second <laughs> exercise is very good that's very yeah. good yeah start absolutely. with that and uh see how the rest of your uh your week turns into a grateful you know state of mind so exactly it's so true so true. pretty amazing and if you really stop and think you should be more grateful than not about yeah. you know there's so many things that are positive in your life compared to negative so right. yeah you know. and i think sometimes one more thought on that is i think sometimes it, it it doesn't take as much energy to be negative i think it's easy to be negative if you want to look easy. at life let's be realistic we're all born and we all die nobody gets out of this thing alive so inherently it's mm -hmm. negative in the long run well what happened to michael james what happened to david brooke i had a father who was very negative i'd say good morning dad and he'd go what's good about it and, and I just thought he was just kind of baked that way. And so yeah. it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but it is that choice. And you can look in that mirror and get a great relationship with that person and decide right now, you can snap your fingers. You can change that quickly and decide going forward, I'm going to put a positive spin on things. And you just, your heart, your brain, your whole body's going to appreciate it so much more that you're running things that way. Mm -hmm. If he's thinking that, he's feeling that, and then That's he's correct. saying that. That's Imagine correct. Imagine if he changed up those things and the difference you would have taken it as well as how he would have felt it and then hopefully lived it. So. Well, and especially in the case of him, there's five of us kids. And if you, once you have mm. children, there's another bunch of people in the equation. And you and Multiplier. I have talked about this 
about my family and your family situation growing up mm -hmm. and so forth. And if you don't want to have kids, that's fine. But once you have kids, you have an obligation to give mm -hmm. them the best nurturing and, and, and upbringing that you can. And I think a lot of that should include a very positive view of things and really help them to make their way through the world when they start, you know, pedaling their own bike. It's so important. <laughs> Absolutely. So important. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, you know, to get down that road, well, because there's so many roads nowadays, right? I mean, yeah, as you know, with the phones and internet and all these options, you know, having those parents that have the foresight to, you know, respect you as a, as a child and bring you up right and educate you properly and not be as negative and be in a more positive space. And, yeah, you know, yes, my parents, your parents, like we've had some pretty interesting conversations and absolutely, you know, your dad saying that and my dad saying, you know, go out and, you know, be a C student or whatever, like, right. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, me, I'm, I'm not trying to be a C student today. So. <laughs> exactly. No, you're, you're clearly an A plus student and, and it's, it's interesting, but even with that being said, if you use the years of my family situations, I will mention occasionally in talks about how, but don't make no mistake about it. I will be your training wheels, but I'm not going to pedal your bike. You got to mm -hmm. do the work. I'll help you, but yep. you got to do the work. I think the good Lord gives you a toolbox, but you have to build the house, you know? So yep. there's, there's effort on our part, but the neat thing about it is you make that effort it'll come back to you in, in spades, tenfold, hundredfold. It's amazing how it comes back to you just making that effort. Mm -hmm. Well said. Thank you, David. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Well, David, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the Noggin podcast today. And You're that welcome. gratitude guy for showing up, telling us about your business, how you and I met initially, you kind bet. of what you're up to in life. And you know, we'd like to have you back at some point. And I would love to come back. Always have time for Michael James. I'd appreciate that. That'd be really great. You bet. Well, I know you've got a big event and some speaking upcoming, so I'm going to let you go. Thank we you We really so appreciate much. your time and hopefully uh, our guests will reach out to you at some point and look you up for the gratitude journal, look you up for a class or hopefully show up to a speaking engagement at some point. Excellent. That would be fantastic. Thank you. I will include all of your links, your website, all of the contact information. So anyone can reach out to you below in my details and comments. And uh, we will be uh, sending this podcast out to all of our channels and social media here very soon. So sounds great. Thank you again, Michael. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having, uh, thanks for coming today as a guest. And uh, we will uh, be, be having future podcasts in the future. We have a few more podcasts upcoming this week. So make sure to watch YouTube, Facebook, and all the other channels that we're on. So everybody have a great day and make sure to use your noggin if you ever get stumped and you can't figure it out. Cheers, everybody. Have a great one. Thanks.